I shall leave the door open in case Bentley decides to join us today. He's thinking about it. He's unsure. He's at the door, but he won't come through. I'm sweaty. I was just dancing. I was having a good dance party because I want to bring the good vibes to today's chat. It's going to be a bit of a catch up. I posted to my Instagram story saying, let's just have a little catch up chat. Let's catch up on life. You can ask me anything you want. And I screenshotted a bunch of questions and I actually answered them like on the cuff last night and then just saved it so that I gave myself almost like structure to follow today. And so I don't veer too far off course because, you know, girl can talk. However, thank God I did that because for whatever reason, Instagram is glitching for me today. So I can't pull up any questions that I might have gotten since then. So I'm just going to have to answer the ones that I that I took screenshots of because for whatever reason, Instagram just doesn't want to work for me today. Let me put on my do not disturb because I'm never disturbed unless I don't want to be disturbed. And then suddenly all the disturbances arise. I was just filming a shadow work journal session before this. So I needed a good transition from one energy into the next, going from shadow work into a catch up with me coffee talk, both of which are meant to literally feel like I'm hanging out with my friends, which I very much do. However, I needed to like dance after that shadow work. So I had Mariah Carey on, I had Usher on, I had freaking Fergie on, and now I'm like, my body temperature is so hot and I'm supposed to just like simmer down. And I'm wearing a sweater, a hot sweater, and I have a hot coffee. And it's just like, there's a whole lot of hotness going on. So I'm hoping to cool down a little bit. The shift in seasons is here. So it's time to update your wardrobe. And instead of a flimsy fast fashion haul or spending your money on things that are not going to last in your closet by next winter, you may want to spend your money wisely this season on Quincy. They have high quality essentials that are going to last you well beyond this season. So upgrade your closet this winter with Quincy. Right now, you can go to quincy.com slash talk to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash talk for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quincy.com slash talk. Give your hair the power of the little pink bottle with Vegamore. For a limited time, Coffee Talk listeners can get 20% off their first order by going to vegamore.com slash talk and use that code talk at checkout. That is V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash T-A-L-K and then use that code TALK to save 20% off your first order. V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash TALK and use that code TALK. Anyway, I'll stop being boring and let's dive into some of these questions. Oh, and the sun is popping out just as we're about to have this afternoon coffee. I love that. That's totally set in the vibe. Okay. I feel good. I feel safe. I know that there were a lot of questions that were just like, how are you? And I think the reason why I decided to write my answers last night and then answer today is so that I don't get too lost in how I am or in my answers. There are two, two things I want to say here. One is very, very logical explanation as to why I struggle with questions like, how are you? And it's literally a mixture of mom brain and just like hormone brain. I am definitely off kilter with my hormones. It's probably going to take me a little bit to rebalance. And that's been a focus of mine lately. So that factors into it. But even without that aspect of it, exhaustion brain and mom brain and just like pregnancy brain that just never went away has left me feeling like I'm not all there. And that's not a slight at myself. Like genuinely the amount of times I go to say something or I go to articulate myself and I draw blanks or worse, I start talking and then I just jamble all of my words up or what I'm saying doesn't make sense or I lose my thought is just way too much. So that's a very real aspect as to how I'm doing and why sitting down without any structure might leave me veering off into like Netherland or is it Neverland? See, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Perfect example. Um, the other reason is that I, I don't know if it's 
if anybody's experienced this before, but sometimes when I try to sit with how I'm feeling, it's almost like the feeling tries to escape me. Have you ever had floaters in your eyes or those little spots in your eyes? And when you try and look at the spot, the spot moves. That's sometimes how my feelings work, especially when I'm trying to express them to other people. I'm really good at being in my feels by myself, but sometimes when I really try to express what I am very genuinely deeply feeling, it doesn't always feel safe to me. And it's like, that's just rooted down to how I'm bred and made as a human being on the planet and my experience. So when I try to express it in into words to other people, a lot of the times the feeling kind of plays that little floaty game with me where I'm like, okay, I, I think I feel, I'm, I'm getting to the feeling and then I, you know, it just floats away. So I've written my thoughts out when I was alone and in my feels and now I'll be able to articulate them to you better today. That's the thing that sucks about Instagram not opening is that I'm going to miss so many great questions because it wasn't until halfway through them that I was like, I should write some stuff down. So the first question I answered is, are you happier than ever? And I wrote, no, but I'm more fulfilled than I've ever been. And that is very accurately true. I would say that the happiest I've ever been in my entire life is definitely the day my son is, was born and him coming into our lives. Like that will forever be the most elated feeling I have ever experienced in my body. And a close second would probably be dancing to live music. So those are like the happiest I've ever been in my entire life and falling in love. Those are probably top three. Um, lately, have I felt that feeling of the happiest I've ever been? No, I haven't, but I definitely feel very fulfilled in being a mom and more than I've ever felt in any other chapter of my life. So that's a cool feeling. How do you know if you're doing what is good for you? And the first thing I wrote is context to what you're doing is important here because how do you know if what you're doing is good for you? It really depends on what it is you're doing. So I think that the real root of this question is how do you trust yourself because you're not even telling me what it is you're doing. And so my answer to that would be that you know. You know. We all have a general sense of knowing and it's just where we're sitting with our connection to our knowing and our sensitivity to our knowing. You know if what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're choosing is right or good for you or if it isn't. A lot of the times we just don't like to make space for it when our deeper inner knowing or our intuition is telling us something isn't for us or isn't good for us because, you know, the, the ego self or I guess more the more impulsive self, the fight or flight self, the very physical human body vessel self, the parts of the brains like dopamine and all of that. There's so many answers that we could go into why, but we want it anyway. And so my answer to this would be, you know, and if you don't know, sit with yourself and ask if there's an elephant in the room, is there something you're avoiding? Is there something you don't want to acknowledge about this thing that you're doing that might not be good for you? And if the answer to that is no, if there's no reason you could see why what you're doing isn't good for you, then you're good. But if you're ignoring your intuition or you're ignoring something because you don't want to bring it to the light, that's some shadowy behavior. And you can absolutely still do something when you know it's not good for you. However, just do it consciously. Do it in a way where you know and you actively are choosing, yeah, I know that this probably isn't a great choice for me, like drinking three coffees a day. This is a decaf. You know what? I've had a day. And so I'm going to make myself another coffee. Who cares? I'm going to consciously make this choice, even though I know it's probably not the healthiest choice. That would be my advice when still choosing to do something that might not be the healthiest for you. And again, context is really important there. The next question is, how, how's your love life since having a baby? And I wrote, some days I've never been more in love with this wickedly handsome, passionate, hardworking man who I made the most beautiful baby with and I love practicing making babies with. However, there are other days that I imagine throwing a pie in his face or that I genuinely give myself the better portion of the dinner that I made because I want to be petty and he's driving me up a wall. And it's not easy. It takes work, but the love is deep. And that is still so, so true and kind of funny in the daylight because yeah, that's the guy genuinely, when I want to be petty, me being petty is, is giving myself the better piece of pizza or giving myself the better portion of the pad thai that I make. And uh, yeah, we get at each other's throats, but we also love each other very, very deeply. So 
that's true. And then I thought about it some more because the longer I looked at the question, I was like, do you mean love life like like our relationship or love life like sex? Because even if you're talking about sex post baby, it's pretty much the same answer. Some weeks are very spicy and hot and other weeks are very dry like a desert. And that's just that's the roller coaster of life with having a baby is that you have great days and you have bad days. You have great weeks and you have bad weeks. That goes for you as like a singular individual person. And that also goes for your relationship as a unit and as an identity together. So that's my answer. Next question. Do you believe it's harder now to raise a child as they are being injected with certain ideologies? I found this question to be so interesting. It caught my attention. First and foremost, before I even get into what I wrote, my initial question, if this was a dialogue, would be to ask, what do you mean by certain? Because there's quotations around certain ideologies. I could take a a guess, but I am guessing. I don't know what this person meant, and I don't like to assume. So here's my answer. Do I think it's harder? No. Ideologies of all kinds have always been threaded throughout society. This is very true. And what even are ideologies but massly agreed ideas of the reality of the world, right? And I don't find ideas to be harmful, especially if they're not ideas that hurt anybody. And and even if they're not ideas that I necessarily agree with, I am, in fact, I genuinely seek out and cherish people who have different ideas, viewpoints, perspectives, and opinions than I do, because I'm able to then look at the kaleidoscope of life from another person. Does that make sense? And that goes for my children too. So let me grow further. I'm sorry, I'm already veering off. I don't expect my children to agree with my ideas either. In fact, I hope that whether I have another child one day or if it's just Easton, I hope that my children will grow up to look at the world with their own eyes and teach me things that I don't know and teach me ideas about the world that I don't know or I can't see. And I hope that we learn and that we grow together as human beings that are experiencing the planet together and that are experiencing life together. What's important is instilling your children with wit, a grounded sense of self, and the confidence to look at the world and filter it through their own minds and their own inner knowing, paired with their experience and the knowledge that they've acquired since they were born, and then choose the ideologies or philosophies that help them most contribute their magic to the world and leave it better than they found it while letting other people do the same. Now, obviously, I would add to this that that goes without saying that we're not talking about ideologies that inflict harm, like purposeful harm. I'm talking about if you have two people that disagree about a reality point for existence, I don't think that there's anything bad or wrong about that. I think you just have two different human beings on the planet. No one person's reality is everybody's reality. Of course, we have a shared reality. And I think that's where we get into things like ideologies that might be, you know, popular in the moment or mass agreed upon in the moment. But I don't think that those things make raising children hard at all. I think that it's always going to be important no matter what ideologies are going out and about in the world right now to raise your children to have a sense of self and a sense of community and to have a sense of groundedness in who they are and trust in their intuition while also keeping open eyes, open ears, and an open heart to try and understand ideologies, understand where they root from, understand where they come from, understand people individually, and then also try to understand our collective. And that can only come from a child that is confident and that is self-assured to things that I did not grow up feeling at all, but that I really hope to you know, break that pattern and raise a child or raise children that are very confident and self-assured so that in a healthy, balanced way so that they can hold space for all of the things that they're confronted with as they move about life and move about the world and filter it through themselves in a way that is like, is this going to help me leave a positive mark on the planet? And if not, then it doesn't even need to be something that they actively go against. It just needs to be indifference. Like let people live their life, even if it's different than you and let people have their ideas, even if their ideas are different than yours. 
that's at least my philosophy. That's how I move through the world. And that's what I hope to pass on to my children. And if they want to take that and they find that that perspective is helpful, then I hope that they continue it. And if they don't, then I hope that they challenge me on that. And maybe I'll get a little activist that's just like, no, mom, like we need to fight against certain ideas or we need to whatever, you know, I don't know if I'm getting it right, but I'm just going to move on. The next question is best mom time management tip, trying to get into some sort of a routine again, three months postpartum. And I wrote due to pregnancy mom brain that I already talked about here today and how hard this year has been. I vaguely remember what three months postpartum was like, or even if I had a routine, when I think back on it, I just draw blanks. All I know is that I still find it hard a year postpartum to find me time and to stick to a routine for longer than a week or two. So all I'm going to say is this. One, congratulations. Two, you're doing a fucking fantastic job. And in case no one is saying it, I'm so freaking proud of you. You're doing it. And three, you deserve to give a little bit of yourself back to yourself whenever and however you're able to do it. This question was super interesting for me to answer because when I sat with it, I genuinely cannot remember what it was like three months postpartum like this year. So much was piled on to the last year. And if I go further, it's, it'll make me emotional for some reason that I'm sure I could pick apart. But I genuinely draw blanks. I think I was just living day by day and getting by but however I might just be misremembering like I genuinely can't remember what it was like I don't know what my time management was like then or maybe I was already giving tips then and I know that now I'm starting to find a very nice even keel however then you know we get sick the whole house gets sick and everything just goes into chaos again so I'm still finding it hard all I know is that I wanted to say those other things because I feel like that's what you need to hear. It's okay if you can't get into a routine or you do get into a routine and then you fall back out of a routine or whatever it is. But it is important, that third point, like you give so much of yourself as a mom and you deserve a little bit of yourself back to yourself too. You gave so much of yourself to your pregnancy. You gave so much to yourself of yourself into your birth, into the birthing experience, into bringing a child to the world and I'm sure into caring for them and loving them and it is not selfish by any means to give a little piece of yourself back to yourself and for each mom it's going to be different how and when you're able to do that but definitely do it and do it in little doses at first and then I know that a lot of people struggle with this I definitely have where you feel guilty and like the minute you finally get you time you're just like okay now I want to go back to my baby but don't like allow yourself to push that time a little bit more and a little bit more and give yourself a bit more back to yourself. Because at least again, in my experience, I find it actually makes me a better mom to have me time and to go off and do my things and then come back to him. And I feel so me and so happy and so fulfilled and I'm more, much more present than when I'm just burning myself out being mom all the time. So it's a catch 22. It's so hard because like all you want to do is be with your babies. Like that's how we're biologically wired. Right. But yeah, it's good to, it's good to do things for you. Find a routine that works for you. Wiggle it around as best you can. Don't try and do too much. I don't know. Now I'm just throwing things at you, but that's my advice. The next question is, do you think there will be a time that you don't do YouTube anymore? And my answer was yes, but I'm not there yet. Ah, uh, yeah, this is a really honest answer. I've always told myself, oh, I'm going to be like 60 and I'll still be vlogging. But like, who's to say YouTube will even be a platform at that time, right? Um, genuinely, when I sit with this question and I sit with my gut feeling when I ask it, there is a part of me that knows there is a break off point where I leave, where I like, I don't know when it is though. And I don't, I don't feel it's now. In fact, uh, I was just talking about this in the shadow work video I was just doing. It's a members video, by the way. I don't like to promote too much, but like if you do want to do some shadow work, it is a members video going out on Sunday, November 12th, I think. Uh, if you want to do some deep shadow journaling work, it brought up a lot and it was very eye opening. But one of the things that it actually brought up is, um, all of the hardship from this year and any time I've ever gone through any phase where it's been heavier or been more shadowy or activated my shadow self if you will it always ends up turning into fuel it always ends up turning into motivation 
And I am feeling the motivation moving into a new year. I just want to be there. I just want to get there, although I'm trying to relax into the present moment. Um, but I'm just like so done with how hard this year was that I'm just like, I want to be there. <laughs> and so with that feeling, I know that I still have some healing to do. I know that I'm not there yet. Like my body is still telling me to rest and to just like take it step by step. But I do feel very motivated to create again. And I'm excited to create again. And I have some things that will be shifting around before the new year in terms of content and where it lands and what I offer as content. So that's really exciting. However, do I see it as a forever thing? I mean, if I'm answering from my, in my dream romanticized world, I would be here forever, obviously, because I'm sentimental like that. But like, realistically, probably not. No. <laughs> and I do have where I would, what I would do if I didn't do this, which I never had that answer for a long time. I finally have that answer now. And I think I'd always write. One thing I would always do is write. I'll always release books if I can and I have the ability to. But YouTube, I'm not, I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. The shift in seasons is here, so it's time to update your wardrobe. And instead of a flimsy fast fashion haul or spending your money on things that are not going to last in your closet by next winter, you may want to spend your money wisely this season on Quincy. They have high quality essentials that are going to last you well beyond this season. Quincy is my go-to spot for shopping when I want luxury without paying luxury prices. They offer a range of must-have items, anything from 100% European linen under $50 to 14 karat gold from $30. And all of their prices are 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And because Quincy creates timeless classic styles that won't go out of fashion, you can keep them in your closet forever. I've recently purchased jewelry. I've purchased 100% organic cotton sweaters for the winter. I'm still rocking my socks from the fall, all of which are going to last me years to come. I have been leaning more into jewelry lately, which is super fun because I've never been a huge jewelry person, but I'm super big on gold jewelry. When I was shopping for some cute jewelry to go into the holiday season, have a couple holiday parties on the docket, I was shocked by how much cheaper it was to get some nice earrings and a necklace that would normally run up hundreds of dollars anywhere else. You might be wondering how Quincy does it. They partner directly with top factories to cut out the cost of the middleman and pass all of the savings on to us, the shoppers. And what's better is that Quincy only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics and finishes. So we can all feel good getting high quality products that are going to last a lot longer. So upgrade your closet this winter with Quincy. Right now, you can go to quincy.com slash talk to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's q-u-i-n-c-e dot com slash talk for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quincy.com slash talk. I'm always trying to do right by my body. So when it comes to my hair and scalp health, finding a product that actually works but is also made with clean ingredients always seems like a trade-off. But with Vegamore, I get products that are made with clean ingredients and give me visibly healthy hair and scalp. Hair health is so important to me. I take such good care of my hair. I always want it to look full and shiny and long and Vegamore helps me do that without any of the harsh ingredients. Every cute pink bottle of Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free and never formulated with potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. Plus, the Vegamore kits are so easy to incorporate into your hair care routine. Whether you're using the Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit, you just throw it in your shower and it's ready to go. Or maybe you want to use some Grow Scalp Detoxifying Serum, which will help remove all the buildup and impurities that might already be existing in your hair. They even have Grow Biotin Gummies, which you take daily to support scalp and hair wellness. The biggest thing that I've noticed, especially with my postpartum hair, is way less shedding. My hair isn't coming out in clumps or on my brush or on my sweaters anymore. You could even try one of Vegamore's value kits, like their Grow Essentials kit, where you get to try more than one amazing product at a time and with great savings. When you sign up for a monthly subscription, you actually save more and you never run low on your products. The key to a good hair care routine is consistency, especially when you want to keep your hair healthy looking. And one of the easiest products to incorporate into your daily routine is the Vegamore Grow Hair Serum. Give your hair the power of the little pink bottle with Vegamore. For a limited time, Coffee Talk listeners can get 20% off their first order by going to vegamore.com talk and use that code talk at checkout. 
That is V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash T-A-L-K and then use that code TALK to save 20% off your first order. V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash TALK and use that code TALK. This is the question that I feel like is like the sister question to the first question that I answered that goes deeper. So let's dive in. Are you really happy in your life now? And I wrote, happiness is, was, and always will be a fleeting emotion. Do I or have I felt happiness in my life now or lately? Absolutely and abundantly. Does it go away at times and get replaced by frustration or tiredness, anxiety, boredom, stress, inspiration, desire, grief, etc.? Yep, that's just life, baby. <laughs> it's so weird reading my own texts out. What I can... <clears throat> What I can say is that I do feel more grounded in myself now and my heart has never been more full and whole than every day that I've lived since having my son and that is period. Like I don't even think I have anything to add to that. Happiness is always a fleeting emotion and I think that this is such an interesting common question where people are like is this the happiest you've ever been or are you actually really happy right now and it's like don't we all move through the shades of emotions given any day to day? Of course we do. I've had some of my happiest moments in the last year, but I've also had some of my saddest moments in the last year too. And that duality is, it's exhausting, emotionally exhausting. It can be heavy at times, but it can also be very beautiful at times. And it can also be all those other emotions I listed too. Like sometimes I'm bored, sometimes I'm inspired, sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm burnt out. Sometimes I'm doing 10 things at once, you know, but the common thread through it all since I've moved here has been this slow grounding within myself. Like I feel more comfortable in who I am. Uh, and then I had Easton and became a mom and I felt more purposeful with who I am and what I do as a person, you know, like I'm in my roles on the planet and I've never felt so full of love, like stomach aching love than every day since I've had my son. And like every day I just love them more, which is just like wild because you don't think you can love your children more or anyone more. And then you just like wake up another day and then you're just like, oh my God, everything you do is so freaking cute. And I just love you. So this is a funny answer. Someone asks, are you okay? And I just wrote, nope, but I will be, which is again, very true. Nope. I'm not okay right now. Like I'm, I'm not, and I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I don't care to admit it. Like I'm not doing great. Things have been really hard for me lately. I've been like super emotional. I've been struggling. I've been stressed. I've been tired. I've been burnt out. I've had so much on my plate. And so, no, I'm not doing the greatest I've ever done, but I'm going to be fine. And I know that. And so that's what I'm focused on. The next question is, what would you like to achieve professionally in the next year? Ah, and I'm going to share my answer, even though it's what's interesting about this is that, again, coming back to my shadow work that I just did, I know why I'm apprehensive to share my answer. And it's because one of my shadow fears is failure and I'm afraid to answer this publicly in case by the end of the year I fail. So I'm just going to make space for the discomfort. These aren't necessarily things that I need to do to be successful as a human being. However, professionally, these are goals I'm setting for myself. I want to release my second fiction book, which I've talked to you guys about. It's the second book in the Catcher series. I want to do either live events or a book tour or both. I mean, it really depends. I, I'm not the best at being realistic with my goals sometimes, but I would love to be able to go on a little book tour or to do live events and like bring my books with me, you know? And three, I want to stick to my baseline content schedule for one year, which I kind of just mentioned things are gonna shift around and I've already made a content plan. Stick to my baseline content schedule and just see what happens. Next question. And this one got me thinking. This is a good one. A quote that inspired me. What is your view? Balance is not a state, but a skill. So that was the quote. Balance is not a state, but a skill. And the question is asking, 
what is my view on that? And I thought that this was such a cool question. Like it genuinely made me stop and think. And I, I want to say that I think it's both a state and a skill. I love the idea of balance being a skill. I think that we can definitely learn how to sharpen the skill of balance in our day-to-day -day lives, but that there are things that are outside of our control that can throw us out of balance and that that's when that skill gets tested and utilized because you have to use that skill of balance to bring yourself back into that state. Does that make sense? Like, I think the answer is really both. I think you can be in a state of balance However, I also do see it as a skill as well. It's like, it's both. Anyway, that's my perspective. Anybody listening today would love to hear your take on this quote. And thank you to whoever asked me that question. It was a really cool one. Next question is, what is your theme for this Christmas time? And I asked, I wasn't sure again, like, do you mean decor? Because if you mean decor theme, I think we're just gonna literally pull out all of our Christmas decor that we already have. And the theme's gonna be good old, classic Christmas decor that we already have so that we don't buy into consumerism. But the second answer is, if you mean more personally, like what does the holidays feel like this year? I'm feeling like this holiday is gonna be chill. Like I'm getting chill vibes. I'm seeing Christmas stuff everywhere and I do get excited, but I don't feel like I'm like Mrs. Claus this year, you know? I'm just like, yay, Christmas. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good hanging out with Christmas from afar. And I think it's going to be adventurous. We're very likely going to be traveling for Christmas, which will be nice. And I think it's going to be cathartic. I think that there's going to be a little bit of sadness this Christmas, but I think that it's going to be like a cathartic sadness because, you know, we'll all be with family. We'll all be together. So next question, how do you stay so organized with your business? And I just wrote LOL in capital letters. This is a trolling question, right? Girl, I am not. And I, yeah, I thought this question again was so funny because I'm just like, what do you mean? I am like, I, I can show you my gist binder for the last three years, 2021, 2022, 2023, and I'm now going into 2024 and I'm still trying to organize the same damn shit. And like, especially when all the rebranding crap happened, which some questions were asking me to talk about. And I'm just like, I'm not going to give it, I'm not, it's, it doesn't matter, you know? Also, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a, over a little bit of a sickness. So I'm like kind of clogged up a little bit if I sound funny, but yeah, it just doesn't matter. And I just feel like it's K it's, it's just been so unorganized and I've had a lot of revelations. I'll leave it at that. And in, in terms of the rebranding and like this hilarious question of how I keep my business organized, I'm not, I'm not organized with my business at all. I'm terrible. That is not a skill set of mine. I've learned that. I understand that. Um, I'm getting back to the things that I know are strengths of mine, but this is not one of them. And I thought this question was so funny because I'm like, don't ask me, do not ask me, um, yeah, just funny. I'll go into this further again when I explain the rebranding things. Like everything has an answer finally. I finally know what I'm doing with the rebrand. I finally know what I'm doing with my content. I finally have it set. Thank God it, it took me a while. I mean, again, when all the rebranding stuff happened, I was only a month postpartum. So I, it, it makes sense again in hindsight that I wasn't gonna have it click into place right away. But yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not organized. I'm not that girl. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Uh, the next question was, can you specify what you offer in the Sunday club membership? And I wrote no, because I'm changing it for the new year. So hang tight. Uh, I would love for you to join now. If you still want to join, you can, like I said, there's the shadow work journal session that you can do this Sunday. Uh, there's content going out every Sunday. We do a book club in live time every Sunday. Uh, there's already content you can watch, tons of bonus content. There was a bonus vlog that went out last week. Um, so you can definitely join now and you will get the update as to what's going on with all of my content before it goes out publicly. However, like, can you specify what you offer? The offerings are gonna move and shift and change. So not too much, but enough that I feel like I wanna wait and just like present it all at once, if that makes sense. Wow, we got actually, I screenshotted a lot more questions than I thought I did. The next question is, how are you doing truly, Kaylin? Let me take a sip, hold up. I'm just gonna read this verbatim so that I don't trail off and then I will trail off afterwards. I wrote, <clears throat> and I didn't proofread last night either, so I'll proofread now. 
I'm sad. Some days I'm super defeated and I'm trying my best to not fall apart. I'm super emotional, but I can rarely express it in front of others. The minute someone acknowledges the amount I'm carrying on my shoulders or the work that I've done both physically, like as a mom and spiritually as a person in the last year or how well I'm handling things, I feel so seen that it makes me immediately cry. Uh, I'm utterly in love with my son, like so much it makes my stomach knot. I'm just trying to take care of myself right now, truly. And my boyfriend and I are working on being stronger for each other and together as a team. Some days are so hard and the odd days are so beautiful. I'm leaning into the beautiful days. You know, I don't even know if I want to add to that. That's actually really accurate. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to add to that. That's accurate. Let's move on. How often do you get some time, some you time since having Easton? And I wrote, lately I've made it a non-negotiable every night, even when I've didn't get much done in quotations for the sake of my sanity and my ability to literally survive right now. I need time to regroup ground process and heal. And this, this pretty much since the middle of October, I fell apart. <laughs> and I feel like in that state, which sometimes you have to fall apart in order to reprioritize what you need to reprioritize. I decided to reprioritize my health and reprioritize myself and to the best of my ability as much as I can because again I have to stay balanced I have to keep sharpening that balance skill because there there's a lot of spinning plates in my life that I'm holding up but I can't hold them up if I'm not holding myself up if that makes sense and so a lot has happened this year and I've just pushed through pushed through pushed through and then now I feel like I'm finally giving myself some time back to myself, kind of coming back to the advice I gave earlier. Like I'm giving a little piece of me back to me and it feels really good in the smallest of ways. Like it's literally my night routine, my night routine right now, just through the week. And I don't get to it every night, but I try is really healing and cathartic. And like, I just do a little bit of movement and I listen to some music and I, get to do like a big beauty routine and a big shower routine or a tub routine or whatever it is. Like some days I do a little bit more skincare. Some days I journal. Like there's just a couple hours at night now that I've not let myself work. I do not let myself do anything. Sometimes I miss out on seeing friends or sometimes I miss out on like, you know, the a TV show or whatever it is. But like I have to right now listen to the calling <laughs> that I need those hours to myself and I'm listening like I'm finally listening because if I don't I know that it's just going to keep getting worse and if I want things to get better then I have to just give myself some time and some space back to myself to do exactly that to regroup to ground to process to heal and so yeah that's that's definitely been recently my me time do you still have a timeline for when you want to get married? I wrote, overall, no. It's not a primary focus for me or us right now. Realistically, though, when I look at a calendar and I factor in what we both want from life, probably 2025. The only reason why I'm not running off to get eloped is literally because we both want to have the dance party. Like, I honestly, everything else that comes with a wedding, I could do without. But when I think about getting married and not having everybody I love or like have a huge ass dance party outside, like that, that's sad to me. That feels like a wasted opportunity. So I don't think that there's many times in your life that you can invite everybody that you love and everybody that your partner loves to come together and dance and celebrate. And so that's the only reason why I think we're holding out to do a, a genuine wedding. Otherwise, like, I don't care about any of the other stuff. Like, we could easily go get eloped. We've thought about it for a hot second. Um, or just, like, signing off on some papers, you know, and just making it, like, a very, like, intimate, small thing. But I want a dance party. I want to dance with everyone. So that's the only reason why we haven't done that. Um, how's And we're not engaged. 
obviously that too. But all, again, like these are things that we openly talk about. It's not one of those things that I'm going to be like surprised by, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like not something that's a primary focus for either of us right now. So it's just like, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. Neither of us are worried about it. Next question is, how is your mental health doing? And I wrote, my therapist is making bank in this season of my life, but it also means my mental health is not going to absolute shite, period, literally. Shout out to my therapist. She's definitely making good money <laughs> off of me in this season of life. But at the same time, I'm doing, I'm doing the therapy. Like I have booked in my therapy sessions. I'm taking care of my mental health. Uh, and I'm just, yeah. Surprisingly though, like I will give myself some grace that I feel like, again, when I really zoom out and look at all the things on paper, like this is all the stuff that has happened or that I've been feeling or that I've gone through or whatever. I'm like, shit, I might be losing a couple screws because I'm like mom brain, but I'm not doing too bad considering, you know, what else can you do but laugh sometimes? Like life is just, sometimes life just smacks you around. Like I feel like I've been smacked around and I'm just kind of laughing. Like maybe that's a bad sign for my mental health. I don't know, but it's, I'm going to therapy. So I'm good. What brings you healing? <clears throat> I wrote rest, crying, working out music. And I would like to add dancing, writing, literally any time my son laughs or just like cuddling with my son or cuddling with my boyfriend and being outside. Yeah, that'd be my answer. Someone wrote, if you're up for it, maybe you could talk about your loss a little further would make me feel much less alone. And the last portion of that question is why I felt called to write anything um because I went through a more recent loss in case anybody's like what are you talking about uh and I talked about it in a vlog but what I wrote is what I'll say possibly in the future I'll talk about it more once I have more hindsight and perspective but everything still feels too raw uh and I'm learning to just like sit in the discomfort of that feeling and know that it'll all be okay and that Sorry, I'm gonna try and get through this part. Let me take a sip, let me take a sip, hold up. Okay. <clears throat> I'm learning to just be okay and know that there's no rush to get up and move on just yet. And that when I do move on and I do get up that I'll find a way to somehow honor that loss and bring it with me or bring them with me, so. Did it. Okay, moving on. How do you stop caring about what people think about you? And I think this is the last question that I answered. It is. Okay. I said, I don't know, because I still care too much in my opinion. This is true. I definitely still care too much. I wish I could sit here and be like, I don't care. And I definitely activate the four agreements a lot where I, I can get into that phase of like, nothing's personal. Don't take anything personally. You know, don't make assumptions. However, I still like subconsciously, it's very hard grain. It's hard wired and it's hard to just like not give a shit about what people think because as human beings and as social beings, like we tend to reflect a lot of meaning about ourselves, about the world by bouncing it off of the mirrors of other people and specifically things like our peers or people we love or look up to or whatever, or want to be accepted by or included by. I didn't write that, sorry. <laughs> what I did write is, however, I've been thinking a lot about death after this year. And while that can be super heavy, it can also be extremely liberating. I have some beautiful angels that I know that if they could come back to earth, that they'd live like even one day was the greatest gift to celebrate over and that there would be no time to get hung up on what just doesn't matter once you pass over to the other side. So in meditating on that and thinking about that, I'm trying my best to live and love like now is all of there is and like the rest doesn't matter. And it's kind of a heavy note to leave things on, but it's also again, a very liberating note to leave things on that when thinking about death in many forms, metaphoric forms, physical forms, in, you know, letting go of old chapters, letting go of people, letting go of like 
things or realities or timelines that are never going to come to be or souls you're never going to know. Like it's just, there's so many ways that I've been thinking about death and it, it really makes me wonder like, well, is that it? Is that all there is? And I'm not going to pretend to know. I love to think about it. I love to hope and wish that there is more. I definitely lean into the notion that there are other dimensions and we're just stuck on one channel, you know, and that once we leave this channel, we go to another channel or we can bounce back and forth. Who knows? All I'm saying is that when it comes to death and thinking about death, it really does put into perspective what we do spend our time and energy on. And so much of our day gets so absorbed by our self-perception through the lens of other people, by caring about what other people think. And to be honest, and I know everybody always says this, but it's because it's true. Most people are absorbed thinking about themselves the same way we are. So it's just like, free yourself, let yourself live, like do what you want to do, say what you want to say, post what you want to post, be who you want to be. Because genuinely, one, if you did pass and then you got today back, you would not live it the same. You would live it like none of that shit matters because it's such a gift and it is. But also too, the reality is that it is going to happen one day. We're all going to be gone one day and none of the shit that people thought about us is going to matter. And in speaking about death, my camera died, which is so on point with what I was saying. But anyway, it's just like, just live your life, free yourself. Like if you have to, it can be heavy, but it also can be liberating. Just remind yourself that death is inevitable and you will stop caring so much about what people think. Like you'll stop putting so much weight on things that you can't take with you when you pass over to whatever dimension hopefully comes next. And that whatever dimension all of our loved ones that have already passed are waiting for us on, you know? So that's what I've been trying to do lately when I catch myself caring too much about what other people think about me. They're not me. They're not living. They're not you. They're not living your life. And if they're wanting to spend their precious time and energy caring, thinking or whatever about you, that's cool. That's just like giving you more power and more energy, you know? So let that be what it's going to be for them and what it means for them. And just like free yourself and let yourself live and love like today is all there is and wake up and do it again tomorrow and then wake up and do it again the next day until that day comes where you don't, you know? So on that heavy note, that's, that's my little catch up on life over coffee. I, again, didn't get to a lot of questions because my Instagram is glitched for whatever reason. So I'm going to go stream Glitch by Taylor Swift and I will chill with all of you guys next week for another Coffee Talk podcast episode. Bye everyone.